Hey guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the DIY stacked bin. Things have been a little rough down here in the basement. I've had to weight things down with uh, make sure the lids are covered so nothing can get in. And uh, so I know if you're going to comment, don't put the lids on the bins, they're going to be unhappy. I'm aware. We're all unhappy. Um, I think I've finally come to the conclusion whatever it is is larger than a mouse. I've seen the footprints now. I'll go ahead and uh, run a little clip of that. Anybody who's good about knowing things like that, feel free to comment. Do I have a possum, a baby raccoon, a rat? What the hell is in my basement? All right. All right. So I still haven't caught them in person, but I did catch their little foots. I put down some of my stone dust to see if I could catch some footprints, and I have. To me, this looks bigger than a mouse. That aside, let's have a look inside the bin. Okay, so. I did try to jam as many um, of my worms in my bins uh, to reduce the number of bins that I had to deal with on this level. So it is much fuller than I would generally keep this bin, but uh, you know, when you have problems, you circle the wagons or whatever they call it. So kind of a mixed bag of things here. I did bring food to feed them with because I have not fed them in a couple of, geez, might be even a month. I don't, I don't know. I've actually been avoid doing, been avoiding doing things in the basement. I had traps and cameras and everything else down here, hoping to catch a glimpse of or catch whatever it is. Um, I put some of the the stone dust that I use for grit on the bins on the ground where I had suspected they had been going through and I did find some footprints. Doesn't make me feel any better that whatever this is is bigger than a mouse. I was really hoping it was a mouse. But it's not looking like it. But right now what I think I'm going to do, I haven't fed this in so long. I don't think there's I don't think there's a chance. Well, they still haven't gotten to that apple. Isn't that weird? Apples are so weird. Sometimes, you know, like when they're pureed and stuff, it'll be gone in a matter of days. This has been in there for a month. Weird. So, I feel better that they weren't starving, that they, they did have food if they had wanted it. Um, so, let's take a look and, and see what we've got here kind of grainy because this was some of the almost finished bins that got put in with brand new bins so this has got a lot of coconut coir and used plant bedding and, and everything in it so I would love to be able to sift this and, and get the castings out of it and reduce further, but it doesn't look like it's, no, it's not really dry enough to, to sift. But I am going to, I'm going to take off that top layer and see what's going on below. Okay, here is the underneath part, and this is done. There's very few worms down here. That's actually great. I'm going to take this out. Um, this is the first bit of luck I've really had. There's almost no worms in here. So I am going to go ahead and put this in the harvest. Scoop them out here. That will make more room for the ones on the next layer to move down. I have really, I don't know, maybe it's just I've never left him alone this long. I've never had the second layer be this devoid of worms. Okay, 
Now I can put some of this down here. We can make some room. It's hard to give them the food they need and aerate the whole thing when they're crammed in there quite so hard. But this will be good. The lower la levels do seem to finish up quicker. I don't know if it's because they retain moisture or they remain undisturbed and the you know worms don't ever get bothered or stressed because I generally leave that layer alone. It's hard to say. That's enough for that. Let me uh, take this one off and let's see what the bottom one's doing. Well, that's weird. That is weird. I don't know what that is. But it's dry down here. It's almost never dry. Got some mealy bugs and some mold. And that is really unusual. Without so many inputs in the upper layers, I guess this one down here didn't have a chance to stay wet. There are some worms down here, but not very many. I think I'm just going to dump this in with the castings. And the worms that are in there can rework through this. I know sometimes when castings get overly dry, they get hard as a rock. And then also, if castings are left for too long, they also can get mold on them. And one of the ways that I refresh them is to basically put a handful of worms and a little bit of food in with the castings. And the worms will you know, keep going through it. And that will keep it fresh or refreshen it. Because um, you don't want it to dry out too much, but if it does, that is one way where you can get the beneficial bacteria and microbes going again is to put a handful of worms if you don't have any in there and feed it a little bit. And that will refresh the castings and you can be assured of their quality when you use them. Okay. This is a cat litter bucket that I had used for some of the worms because I was running out of places to put them. So this can now have a home in the bottom here. It looks like it had a apple down there, so they weren't going without. But I'll bust it up for them a little bit. But now that can be one bin reduced. That makes me happy. All right. Let's reassemble this. Put the top layer on. Alright, and what I'm going to do here is I'm going to kind of fluff this up. Because it's been so compacted, um, I mean, this top portion is probably pretty close to needing harvested, but considering how compacted it is and um, the shape of the worms and everything, um, having not been fed for a while, I'm going to fluff it up, I'm going to feed it, and hopefully we can get this bin back on track. But it is very compacted. Yeah, they're pretty, I mean, most of these castings or most of these bins were started four or five months ago. So they, they, you know, in general should be ready to be harvested anyway. But due to the worm apocalypse, um, you know, schedules change. 
Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the middle here after I get done breaking up all these clumps. Alright. Just going to put the compostable bags and the coffee filters that have been in here for a while. And then I'm actually going to feed them their first real meal in quite some time. And uh, tis the season for the pumpkin feedings. And this moisture should trickle down to the levels below. And hopefully these worms can finally grow up a little bit more. And that would make everybody happy. But I'm going to cover these guys up, put the lid on, and then put all the weights back on top of it. Uh, I see they did poke one of the little screens. I don't know. You can see the screens over here, right here. A couple of these have been poked out, but whatever it is didn't get in last time. Which kind of leads credence to the fact that I think it might be bigger than a mouse, because those are definitely mouse size holes. All right. Well, that is it for the DIY bin today. If you like the video, give me a muddy thumbs up. And if you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that little bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.